Good afternoon, Cyber Family. This is your girl T, T's Corner, coming from the corner of my driver's seat. And uh, no, I'm not driving, so yes, I'm hands free. I'm actually parked at Ottawa Park uh, having lunch. And uh, I just wanted to talk to people. You know, I like to share, I just like to talk to y'all. And yeah, I'm Team Natural, and I got my protective style going here. I'm a little, my little pig twist, like baby pigtail twist. Um, anyway. I wanted to talk about uh, the cast of Greenleaf, the characters, because after eight episodes into this, um, and let me correct, because in one of my reviews I said there was only 10 episodes, there's actually 13 episodes in the first season, and I think they've already shot 26, I think they've shot two seasons already, which makes me unhappy, because we'll, we'll start with a character sketch of um, Noah Kendall, head of security at Calvary uh, Church, works for the Greenleaf family because I am so Team Gigi, and I'm like, even though it's kind of cruddy how her and Noah have gotten back together when he's engaged to and dating Isabel, um, I don't like Isabel anyway, so I'm happy that Noah and uh, Gigi have got their groove on last week, and I don't know how that's gonna play out. It's gonna be awkward as we've seen the following morning at church and with her um, creeping out and doing the walk of shame. Um, but the uh, character Noah Kendall is portrayed by Benjamin Patterson. And I'm not familiar with Benjamin Patterson. I'm not really familiar with a lot of the Greenleaf cast. Um, a lot of them are new to me, even if they're not new to the industry. And I'm reading Ben's credits, his resume, I guess you could say. Um, I know he was on the show Noah's Ark. And I didn't watch Noah's Ark as a fan, you know, religiously every week, but I had seen it a couple times. Don't recall seeing him. But anyway, we meet Noah when Grace and Sophia get to the house, the main gate, which is like a mile from the big house or whatever. But um, through Sophia, we find out that Grace and Noah were an item in the past. Later, we find out it was more serious than just being an item. But Noah is engaged to Isabel, and I have come up with character names for them, especially if I don't like them. And I do not like Isabel, so my name for Isabel is Insecure Isabel because that's who she is. Um, Insecure Isabel is portrayed by Anna. I think her last name is pronounced Diop. I could be wrong, but um, Anna portrays uh, Isabel. Isabel is a teacher at Black Excellence. And so they're a couple and they met at Essence Fest and they dated for two years and then she moved to Memphis from wherever she came from to be with Noah. And now they're engaged and she's working at Black Excellence as a teacher because he works for the Greenleaf family. And she was like, you know, I took this job to be here with you. I could teach anywhere, but I'm, you know, here for you. It's obvious she's not really happy about being there. And I don't know if that was an issue before Gigi came home, but we know it is now. And as I said, she's insecure. So probably has a lot to do with Gigi. So I personally feel like while Isabel is insecure, in some ways, Noah gives her a reason to be because I think for me personally, it's kind of obvious every time he looks at Gigi that there's still something there. So if that's the case, and I mean, I realize Gigi's been gone for 20 years, but if you're not over her, how are you possibly gonna marry Isabel? So, lost my train of thought where I was going with that. This is the thing about, you know, live recording. I'm not scripted. I'm just sitting in my car at the park. Um, and checking this clock to see what time I got to go back to this job I really don't want to go to today but thank the Lord for because I got bills and responsibilities checking my clock out so anyway um, so Noah and uh, Isabel are planning their wedding and Lady May the first lady of the church and you know wife of bishop parents of uh, the Greenleaf children has so very graciously, quote unquote, uh, offered to host and 
pay all expenses for their wedding. As I get into Lady May, we'll understand that there's some stuff with her that I don't like, but we'll, we'll wait till we get to her character sketch. So, and in planning this wedding, they're, you know, uber rich, so you can be just as creative as you want to be with somebody else's money. And Isabel's like, hey, why not? And Noah's like, we don't need an $800 cake, so calm yourself. But Isabel is um, cheating on exams for kids because she's trying to live up to uh, Messy Carissa's standards for the standardized testing. And apparently the kids were not meeting the mark. But as you can see, Carissa, portrayed by Kim Hawthorne, also has a name because she messy and I don't like her all the time either but anyway um so that's pretty much it uh Isabel's insecure she when Gigi first came back and she knew of course that she knew that Noah and Gigi had a past and so when Gigi came back for Faith's funeral the first thing that really put me off on Isabel was that she asked Noah how she looked how did Gigi look and he's like you know she looked like Gigi and then, you know, to cover his own ass, he says, but she don't hold a candle to you. You know, she ain't got nothing on you. You ain't got nothing to worry about. Okay. Now, here, here is the rub where that is concerned. Insecure Isabel is not unattractive. She's not. She's a pretty girl. But that don't mean that Gigi ain't pretty too. So stop lying to her because she got eyes and she can see. She know what Gigi look like just like you know what Gigi look like. Stop lying. So... Anyway, the second strike against Isabel for me was asking Gigi out to dinner. So now she's playing third wheel on their bicycle at the barbecue joint. Why? Why do you care what she looks like? Why do you want her to come out and eat? And so then as they're talking and they're, you know, well, tell me something about you and blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Isabel's like, she notices that they're so different. They're, the things that they're interested in are very different. Their personalities are very different. And she makes the statement of how, you know, wild it is that they're so different considering both of them have been the women in Noah's life. And I'm just like, stupid. There you go, stupid. You sitting up there pointing stuff out, you don't even know it. You doing stupid stuff and don't even know it's stupid. You're pointing out the differences between yourself and Grace. You don't know if those things that are different about you are the things that he likes about her. Yet you keep bringing it up, which is going to put it on his mind after a while. He's going to start reminiscing and thinking back because you always bringing up old shit. Just stupid stuff. So anyway, I, I just, I, I, I'm not here for her. I'm really not here for Isabel. And then... Another thing that really, really upsets me with Isabel is that she and Noah have decided um, to wait until they're married to have sex. And they've been doing good at abstaining until Gigi comes home. Gigi comes home and now she's giving them head and spending the night. You ain't been spending the night and slobbing the knob. Why are you so threatened by the return of Grace Greenleaf that you are just everything that you claim to have stood for no longer matters because now you have competition get your life together please and stop worrying about the ex and the next get yourself together and worry about Isabel stop being so damn insecure if he's not the man for you or you feel like you're not the woman for him you should have been long gone before Grace ever came home or you should have never came from wherever you came from in the first place so episode 8 Grace busts up in Noah's office like, hey, cowboy, I got a question. I don't know if that cowboy thing means something. Maybe we'll find that out in future episodes. Who knows? But when she busts up into the office, Isabel and Noah are saying goodbye in the office and smooching or whatever. So it's kind of a eh, awkward third wheel type of moment again. And so Isabel finishes up what she was saying to Noah they say their goodbyes and then she's like oh you know I'm doing place cards for the wedding who's your plus one Grace says Sophia oh no special someone you know you want to bring stop being messy your insecure ass got to have a man on the arm all the time everybody ain't like that stop it 
You keep on talking about somebody special, not knowing your damn man is the somebody special. You better stop. You finna give him away. So, she says, no, it'll just be, you know, me and Sophia. And she keeps on. She keeps on. Don't keep pushing the damn man button because she got one in mind. So, she says, well, maybe you'll meet one on the dance floor. I'll pray for you. Insecure and messy. Let's add that now to your resume. So, she goes on out and the, the you know the, the the straw that just breaks the camel's back is when she walks out the door she says okay bye cowgirl i'm like i don't like her ass i ain't liked her from the pilot to episode eight i don't like her so that's pretty much in a nutshell noah and isabel now of course also noah is assisting Gigi in trying to bring down uncle mac and find out all the dirt that his perv ass has been doing to these young girls and they finding out how he's doing it and stuff like that so he's helping Gigi so they are working closely together outside of the church on what her real mission is for coming back to Memphis in the first place um looking at this clock because maybe I need to start heading back to work I got to be back in 10 minutes I'll leave in five um so anyway then we come to um Alexa Alexa is pastor secretary and she used to date a memphis grizzly which is how he kind of recruited her because he was really recruiting that memphis grizzly money claims is because you know he wanted an efficient uh secretary with a heart for god but he brought up the memphis grizzly grizzly so we know it's about that nba money um and alexa is jacob's side piece and jacob is the only son of lady may and bishop greenleaf and i don't think alexa's dumb I don't think Alexa's a token. Alexa knows exactly what she's dealing with, with dealing with Jacob. You ain't never leaving your wife. We're not going to pretend you are. And we're not going to pretend you my man. And I'll be so, you know, blah, blah, blah. And Jacob even said, you know, I feel like you just referring to me as a body. Like, you know, I'm nothing more than a piece of meat to you too. And if Alexa know, like I know, then that's where he better stay. That's not your man. Ain't no need. And putting no permanent expectations on a um, temporary situation it don't ever work and like you said i know you're not ever leaving carissa so there's that so once it became known that um well not became known because of course carissa already knew but once carissa broadcast to the entire family at dinner that jacob was screwing alexa alexa was fired bishop fired alexa i have a problem with this I have a problem with this unless there is a morals clause in alexa's contract for how she is to act being the pastor secretary then the fact that she's screwing the pastor son is not really grounds for termination she ain't got nothing to do with what he do see i have this mentality and i'm probably wrong and the lord is working on me i am a work in progress but my thing is if you are a single person male or female and for some reason, you get involved with a married man or a woman. You are wrong if you know that this person has a significant other, a spouse, you know, girlfriend, whatever, fiance, whatever. If you get involved with them, you are wrong because you know. But the majority of the burden, in my opinion, falls on that person who is married because they are the ones who are cheating on and being dishonest with their spouse or you know even if they're not married their girlfriend their fiance whatever that burden is on them because you're not accountable to their spouse but they are so i feel like alexa getting fired for sleeping with jacob is like grounds for a lawsuit unless there's a moral clause in her employment contract and, you know, hey, maybe uh, Craig Wright and Oprah, you know, maybe y'all will delve into that a little bit. Check that out. Because I don't think that it's cool that, you know, just for getting the rocks off in the church closet with the deacon's Bible or the bishop's Bible during Sunday morning service. It's nasty, but it's not grounds for termination. And we'll just move right on to Jacob from there. Jacob. And I don't know why his Uncle Mac calls him Junior because his name is Jacob and his daddy's name is James. But anyway, Jacob is a pastor who wanted to be a baseball player who's married to Carissa and they have two children, Zora and Winky. 
when we meet Carissa, automatically she's that abrasive, annoying in-law. And she goes in on Gigi at the dinner table as if it is her place. And because First Lady May is just as messy, she encourages it. But we ain't gonna talk about her. We're gonna, gonna wait, like I said, till we get to that. But, um, <clears throat> so Jacob is screwing Alexa, really don't give Carissa the time of day. Real messy with it. He just in the next room while they getting ready for dinner and church and stuff, texting. He, he ain't living for the right thing. But I'm like, I'm torn there because I'm like, Carissa is messy and she meddles and she seems to be one of those um, elitists who's worried about position. And for them, the elite area or arena that they play in is a mega church. And so she's worried about Jacob being um, over the deacon board and him being preaching and being able to preach on Wednesdays and, and how Grace's return is going to affect that. And so I don't like her because she seems like she's opportunistic in, in the worst kind of way. But at the same time, you can't help but have a heart for her because her husband don't have no respect for her and he's screwing Alexa in the church closet and lying about being at Deacon's meeting so he can go to her house and just, you know, so you can't help but have a heart for her being in this situation. But then even though you have a heart for her for being lied to and, you know, just taken advantage of, you're like, he's really not taking advantage of you because you know when you stay anyway. So what is your motive? So I'm going to end the character sketch and we'll call this character sketch part one of Greenleaf. Having dealt with Noah, Insecure Isabel, Messy Carissa, and that nasty Jacob. And uh, we'll hit some more characters in part two, but I got about five minutes to get back to work. So lunch is over. Talk to you guys later. Signing off. Tease Corner.